When a newcomer enters the temple, there's a feeling of anxiety, anxiousness. They don't know what to expect. Um, I get a lot of phone calls, and, and they ask me, well, what do we have to do? Well, or what can I wear? And I say, you can wear anything, but I do ask you not to wear pajamas or come in your birthday suit. They think that's hilarious. And it puts people at ease. So when they come, they, they walk up the eight steps. Count them. If you ever come to temple, count the number of steps. Come through the front door and see which path you take. Most newcomers will take the middle aisle. And that middle aisle focuses directly to our Myogo, or Namu Amidabutsu. And, and they also see the gold, the brightness, the warmth it presents. And, and that's one feeling we want to to share with every newcomer that comes in is that feeling of security and that feeling of warmth and to get rid of that anxiety that they feel not knowing what to do. And when we walk down and we see, when we walk into a temple, that anxious feeling is there, but once we enter this area, we take a seat. We focus on the altar. And we forget about our hunger. We forget about our sleepiness. We forget everything that we brought in with us. We are present in that very moment. Then we ring the bell, the console, and we hear how it goes up, how it comes down, the number of hits that are made. And we sit and we can feel relaxed. We can breathe. Take that deep breath in. And that's what a temple does. It makes you forget, just for that time, to forget what we carry every day in our lives. All the suffering and sorrow. And yet, we also have those joyous moments. As it says in our teaching on the Eightfold Path, life is difficult. Every minute, there is difficulty in everything we do. Yet, we have to be self-reflective on what causes those suffering. When we come to temple, we learn. We learn. It's like, oh no, we have to learn something new. But that's okay because we learn things every day. But when we come to a temple, we learn to, to truly hear and to listen. And, and the little knowledge you take home with you. We take home to do self-reflection on and maybe use that knowledge, that little bit of knowledge in our action, in our making ourselves a little bit better. I'm not saying that all information that is 
that is not information, but all knowledge that is that is founded, that is said to you is going to work for you. But it gives you something to think about. It makes you look within yourself. To know yourself. To begin to know yourself. We have a tendency to, to turn off our hearing and our listening when we don't want to hear something. And we have a tendency to ignore. But when we come to temple, it brings back what our blind passions are, which is our greed, our anger, our ignorance. And, and temple helps you to, to at least look at those things those three blind passions and what causes them to cause us suffering. This greed comes in many forms. Anger comes in many forms. And our ignorance is not understanding. So we, when we come to temple, we take a little bit of knowledge that may fit into that, what causes my greed? Take that little knowledge and what causes that anger in me? Or that anger to others? And hopefully that little bit of wisdom that you take here from the temple helps in your actions towards living your life. It's a very difficult task of self-reflection. We don't want to see our true self. We don't want to know our true selves. We know our surface self, and we like that. But what is truly inside here? When I recite Namu Amidabutsu, the Buddha comes to me to say, listen, hear, learn. And when I say Namo Amidabutsu, I am taking my trust and putting it into the teachings, the Dharma. And that's when I give thanks and show my gratitude for the teachings that are shared with me. I don't live all the teachings. I'm human, like everyone else. But there are very, there are many moments where Namo Amidabutsu does guide me, give me direction, tells me when to close my mouth and just listen. Namu Amidabutsu. Up there, our miyogo. Something that is not tangible to the touch. Visually, yes, but physically tangible, no. Because our Namu Amidabutsu comes from the heart. And it comes from our mind. True and trusting is one nimble two away. That was given to me, or said to me, by Reverend Dr. Tegan Yamoka. And when he gave that, when he said that to me, I had to stop. And I had to do things. And I had to dig, dig deep and think, self-reflection. That's all I ask, self-reflection. Don't be afraid to go there, because 
That's what Jodo Shinshu is. Seeing what is inside of us. If you would please join me in God's show. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. True and trusting is only one number two away. True and trusting is only one number two away. Something to think about. It had me thinking about it all day yesterday. True and trusting. Is only one number two away. And if we really think about it, it only takes one true and and with true heart and mind. Namu Amidabutsu. To open us up into trusting in the teachings. Cheers.